Hello students! Welcome to Grade 10 Science Lesson! And I'm your teacher, Mom Marian Soriano. In your lower grade science lessons, you have learned about chemical reactions. You've seen the color changes of an indicator when tested with acids and bases. Or tested the reactivity of some metals. You've also learned in chemical bonding that atoms can gain stability if they lose or gain electrons. Let us learn more about chemical reactions in today's lesson. Lesson 7. Chemical Reactions, Law of Conservation of Mass, Part 1. You have learned that substances undergo chemical bonding. That results to breaking of bonds and formation of new bonds. In this way, new substances are formed. In this example, the reactants, hydrogen and oxygen, reacted from one another to form new substances which are molecules of water. Formation of new substances means a chemical reaction has taken place. Evidence of Chemical Reactions One evidence of chemical reaction is the production of light. For example, if you place a strip of magnesium ribbon over a flame, it burns with oxygen, an intense light will be formed. Next is a change in intrinsic properties like color or odor is another evidence that chemical reaction happened. Notice that after burning the magnesium ribbon, there is change in color or even on its texture. Another evidence is the evolution of gas. For example, when you mix together baking soda and vinegar in a container, chemical reaction happen because of presence of bubbles. The evolved gas is carbon dioxide, which is colorless and heavy form of gas. To test the formation of carbon dioxide, it can be used to extinguish the lighted candle. The carbon dioxide displaces the oxygen which is needed to make fire. A change in temperature means chemical reaction happen. When the vinegar and baking soda were mixed, carbon dioxide evolved. An increase in temperature also happened during the reaction. And lastly, another strong evidence that chemical reaction happened is the formation of precipitate. For example, if you combine aqueous copper solution and sodium hydroxide, it forms blue precipitate. What are reactants and products? Keep in mind that chemical reactions occur when chemical bonds between atoms are formed or broken. The substances that go into a chemical reaction are called the reactants, and the substances produced at the end of the reaction are known as the products. For example, when magnesium reacts to oxygen, it forms magnesium oxide. The magnesium and oxygen gas are the reactants, while the magnesium oxide is the product. The reactants and products in a chemical reaction can be written in a chemical equation. These are the symbols used in writing chemical equations. The plus sign which shows combination of reactants or products. An arrow means to produce, to form, or to yield. Two arrows in opposite directions meaning it is a reversible reaction. If a delta symbol is placed above an arrow, it indicates that heat is supplied to the reaction. If a formula written above or below the yield sign, it means a catalyst or solvent was used in the reaction. And symbols written beside reactants and products, S means solid, L means liquid, G means gas, and AQ means aqueous, means the substance is dissolved in water. Let us perform an activity. Get a piece of paper and a pen. Identify the reactants and products in the following chemical reactions. Let us start. First, copy the following table in your paper and then complete it by writing the reactants and products from the given chemical reactions. 
Identify the reactants and products from the chemical reactions below. Below each reaction, write the symbol or formula of the reactant and product. First chemical reaction, liquid hydrogen peroxide in the presence of the catalyst manganese dioxide produces water and oxygen gas. Number 2. Iron nails reacts with aqueous copper sulfate and forms iron to sulfate and copper. Third, acetic acid or vinegar and sodium bicarbonate or baking soda produce sodium acetate with the release of carbon dioxide and water. Fourth, a strip of magnesium ribbon combines with oxygen gas with presence of heat to produce powdered magnesium oxide. And lastly, in this activity, aqueous copper sulfate reacts with aqueous sodium hydroxide to produce insoluble copper 2 hydroxide and sodium sulfate solution. Let us check your answer. For the first chemical reaction, the reactant is hydrogen peroxide. Manganese dioxide is not a reactant but rather a catalyst. The products are water and oxygen. For the second chemical reaction, the reactants are iron and copper sulfate. And the products are iron to sulfate and copper. For number three, the reactants are acetic acid and sodium bicarbonate. And the products are sodium acetate, carbon dioxide, and water. For number four, the reactants are magnesium and oxygen. And the product is magnesium oxide. And for the last chemical reaction, the reactants are copper sulfate and sodium hydroxide. The products are copper 2 hydroxide and sodium sulfate. In chemical reactions, it can be written in chemical equations. Using some symbols, since the reactants and products are written in chemical formula, we can write the chemical reactions in chemical equations. Let's have another activity. Write the chemical reactions in chemical equations. You may pause this video as you write your answer. Using the formula and symbols, here are the chemical equations of the five chemical reactions. Types of Chemical Reactions Here are the major types of chemical reactions. We have Combination Reaction Decomposition Reaction Single Displacement Double Displacement and Combustion Reaction Let's study each type of chemical reactions. Combination Reaction or also known as Synthesis Reaction it is a reaction in which two or more substances combine to form a single new substance. Below is the general form of a combination reaction. An example of this reaction is when magnesium combines with oxygen gas with the presence of heat to produce powdered magnesium oxide. Next is the composition reaction. It is a reaction in which a compound breaks down into two or more simpler substances. Below is the general form of a decomposition reaction. Example of decomposition reaction is when hydrogen peroxide with the presence of the catalyst manganese dioxide produces water and oxygen gas. 
Next is single displacement or replacement reaction. It is a reaction in which one element replaces a similar element in a compound. Below is the general form of single replacement. In general, in this reaction, if element C is a metal and replaces element B, which is also metal in the compound, when the element that is doing the replacing is a non-metal, it must replace another non-metal in a compound. For example, iron reacts with aqueous copper sulfate and forms iron 2 sulfate and copper. In this reaction, iron is a highly reactive metal, replacing copper and forming iron 2 sulfate and copper. Next is double displacement reaction or also known as double replacement reaction. In this reaction, the positive and negative ions of two ionic compounds exchange places to form two new compounds. Below is the general form of double replacement reaction. This reaction generally occurs between substances in aqueous solution. In order for a reaction to occur, one of the products is usually a solid precipitate, a gas, or a molecular compound such as water. For example, Aqueous copper sulfate reacts with aqueous sodium hydroxide to produce insoluble copper 2 hydroxide and sodium sulfate solution. The last type of chemical reaction is combustion reaction or also known as burning reaction. In this reaction, a substance containing hydrocarbons reacts with oxygen gas releasing energy in the form of light and heat and producing carbon dioxide and water. During a chemical reaction, the mass of the reactants is equal to the mass of products. This means that the atoms are rearranged but they are not created nor destroyed. This idea can be explained by the law of conservation of mass. The law of conservation of mass what is the law of conservation of mass? According to the law, the mass of the reactants must be equal to the mass of the products. No mass will be created nor destroyed during a chemical reaction. This simply means that mass is conserved. For example, we have a methane gas which is made up of one carbon and four hydrogen and reacted to four atoms of oxygen. The reaction leads to the production of carbon dioxide and water. Notice that the number of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen remains the same, or equal for both reactants and products. Remember that chemical reaction can be presented in a chemical equation. In this example, the number at the left side of a reactant or product is called coefficient. The coefficient is a number that is placed before the formulas indicating the number of molecules or moles. It is very important to determine the correct coefficient number to balance the chemical equation, thus following the law of conservation of mass. Here are the basic steps in balancing a chemical equation. The first step is to write the chemical equation of the given chemical reaction. For example, aluminum reacts with oxygen to produce aluminum oxide. After writing the chemical equation, the second step is to make a list of all the elements on each side under the equation for both the reactants and products. The third step is to identify or determine the number of atoms on each element. In our example, for the reactants, the number of aluminum is 1 and the number of oxygen is 2. For the products, the number of aluminum is 2 and the number of oxygen is 3. Clearly, the number of atoms or mass in reactants is not equal to the number of atoms or mass in products. To balance the equation, for the fourth step, we need to find the lowest possible coefficients to balance each atom. For the reactants, for the aluminum, we can multiply it by 4 to have 4 aluminum in reactants. 
For the oxygen, we can multiply it with the coefficient 3 to have 6 atoms of oxygen. For our aluminum in products, we can multiply it with coefficient 2 to have 4 atoms of aluminum. For our oxygen, we can multiply it with coefficient 2 to have 6 atoms of oxygen. Notice that the number of atoms in reactants is now equal to the number of atoms in the products. For the last step, we can now place the coefficients at the left side of molecules. For the reactants, for the aluminum, we can place 4, and for the oxygen, 3. For our product, for the aluminum oxide, the coefficient is 2. Now the chemical equation is balanced. Always remember that the coefficients are the only numbers that can be changed. And it must be a whole number. Remember also that the subscripts cannot be changed. Let's have another example. Ethanol can be used as a fuel source in an alcohol lamp. Write the balance equation for the combustion of ethanol. First, let's write the chemical equation. Ethanol reacted to oxygen gas. And since it's a combustion reaction, the products will be molecules of carbon dioxide and water. Next is we need to list the elements and the number of atoms in reactants and products. Since the number of atoms in reactants is not the same with the number of products, we need to determine the lowest possible coefficients that can be used to multiply to the number of atoms in reactants and products to make the equation balance. Here, the number of carbon and hydrogen in products is now equal to the number of carbon and hydrogen in the reactants. However, the number of oxygen in the products will be changed since we placed the coefficients 2 and 3. Thus, we need to place a coefficient in the molecule of oxygen gas in the reactant side to make it equal to the product side. Now we have a balance equation. Let's have an activity. Get a piece of paper and a pen. Balance the following chemical equations. Let's start. Applying the law of conservation of mass, balance the following chemical equations. You may pause this video as you answer this activity. Let us check your answer. Here is the answer for each chemical equation. Always remember that during a chemical reaction, the total mass of reactants is always equal to the total mass of products. And this is according to the law of conservation of mass. That no atoms will be created nor destroyed during a chemical reaction but rather will undergo rearrangement. I hope you learned and enjoyed our lesson. This is Mamarian Soriano. See you in the next lesson.